Now, for, for a lot of people, this probably just looks like a bunch of like green on, you know, things on, uh, laid out on, on, on a flat world map. But what this layout represents is actually these metal plates that are placed all over this, this plane. And, and they are placed there, these ones in this blueprint, the, the Nazca lines that, you know, have been decoded. Those bars represent these locations on Earth. And, and these are huge bars. These are huge electromechanical installations. It's like a big cathode ray tube or operates exactly the same way an oscilloscope would. The, the sun is a, a ray or a bunch of, well, they call them electrons, a stream, and it is forced into this, you know, magnetically charged areas between these plates. At the east, it started, it's prepared, it's given a kick or a push, a sweep trigger, it's called, gives it to it, starts pushing the sun across from east to west to the west side of the plane. Once it gets to the west side of the plane, another switch, a trigger called a flyback killer, terminates the sun for that day, or at least makes sure that its energy is not seen in the split second that it flies back to the east and gets another push to sweep across the plane again. What this design really means is that our sun is not spinning or hurling through space. We are not revolving and spinning on an axis around it, following it through space. The sun is generated locally by this system and it follows electromagnetic waves that come up from the ground and guide it. In fact, what, what we're starting to think is these the circular disc shape that pushes the sun it's formed like a cone and the sun is on top of this cone and this cone moves across these plates with the light that is our sun on top of it and that's where i am again all these green lines the major the, the thicker ones the bar shapes they're involved with the flexion of the sun through the seasons See, I can get up and point out a bit to you. I'll point it with the light because my headphones won't reach. But up in the north corner there, it's too bright. Up in the north corner, those wedgie shaped uh, things, with those boxes beside them, actually magnetize and help deflect the sun. This bar here, north of Rush also. See, this bar is one of the winter season sun guides there's another bar just off to the west and it's it's huge it's actually the same size as greenland but because of the skewing of the maps and trying to hide stuff for generations now it looks cockeyed this bar here over alaska is the same size as the bar over greenland but on the world map the globe these two bars, the two tips of these bars are pulled towards each other like it's showing you that it's like 8.30 or 7.30 in the evening where they actually run parallel to each other. Can you find, okay. your, camera, can you find your camera left a little, Jim? We're missing the left part of the map. Okay, left. That way left, that way left. <laughs> that way, that's there. it. Yeah. A bit more. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Okay. Right there. So, we have phenomena we see. Again, if you notice, there's a bar that comes off this long bar that's off the east coast of the Atlantic. Now notice it comes from basically the northern Quebec border straight down and it crosses Florida. Now there are these huge plates that run underneath from, you know, mid-Atlantic mm -hmm. to, you know, between South Carolina, Florida, North Carolina, the Chesapeake, straight back west you know, um, all the way to Los Angeles, California, and down to the Baja, and straight back to, well, Easter Island of all places. Down here, when they're having their summer south of the equator, these plates that run through, 
uh, and underneath the continental, you know, South America, to these two plates that are on the front wall or the west coast of, of South America. These are two huge plates that have been placed there to work in unison with these plates to guide the sun. This one too runs off to, I think this one's to Easter Island and this northern one goes to the Hawaiian Island chains. So these deflectors up here help to deflect the sun over these plates for a winter. I figure these two plates here are in the transition of, you know, seasons. And then these plates are the ones responsible for helping the south have their full summer before the cycle switches back the other way. But up here, even beyond where, you know, we can see the symbol is part of, again, the sun's deflection plate, probably for the northern winter. Again, we have that phenomena in Canada where we see the northern lights. Well, there are plates that intersect that run on the uh, western side of uh, Hudson's Bay and also traverse the north of Hudson's Bay all the way to the foot of the Rockies there, nearly to Alaska, where I'm pointing. So this might be a curtain, uh, well, the the conductor for those curtains of, of, of lights that rain down as the Aurora Borealis. These two intersections, well, we call this section right here, just off Florida and the Bahamas, the Devil's Triangle. Well, a lot of things happen with magnetic bars that big and metal objects close to them. So, again, that's about, you know, my input was actually for this group and this study was having that photo of the bar help to identify by the symbols on the Aztec maps that was being decoded by FTV as these huge metal bars. And when, you know, after a lot of kind of like brainstorming and mental blockage and other stuff, you know, um, I, I looked at the configuration and realized it's like an oscilloscope or cathode ray tube. And again, our sun is created every day in the east, sent across the plain, and terminated when it comes to the west end. Either terminated or the, 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 the light is suppressed for a split second and it flies back. Please take notice of the light in this image, that it is attached to the solar boat. Now remember, Ra was switched off and being rejuvenated. Isis, Ra's mother, is caring for him and nourishing him back to life. It decodes what this means in reality is that Isis has what we will call a pilot light. It projects into the heavens to show the sun's return path back to the east, coincidentally. The path it returns back via the chakras also matches the ISS path perfectly, which also match events recorded on the mimic map. What you are witnessing is the sun's pilot light, Isis, not the ISS in the heavens. This also decodes as Mary, which we must assume is doing the same role for Jesus as further research reveals in the wiki. There are other similarities in other scriptures of this type of family relationship, a relationship that we decode as technological events between various parts of the sun's halos nodes. The reference to Mary is due to the translation in Latin of Stella Maris, which translates as Star of the Sea, which is first applied to the Virgin Mary in the manuscript tradition of St. Jerome's Latin translation of the Omnimastication by Euberus of Caesarea.